Hi everyone, in this video we're going to revisit the subject of generative modelling. In doing so, I'm going to tell you about an add-on I've created to simplify the process of building generative styles in Blender 2.8. People seem to really enjoy the last video on the subject, and a lot of you wanted to show me all of the fantastic artwork that you'd been making with the technique. All of that stuff was really cool to see. At the end of the first video, I mentioned that I was intending to get more involved with scripting for Blender. And so after putting out the last video on stylistic alien environments, I buckled down and got to work on a new tool. It's called Biogen, and it lets you not only create randomized objects with non-destructive generative styles, but it also lets you apply generative styles to pre-existing objects with the click of a button. There are a collection of relevant options for each of the available procedures, which will show depending on what mode is selected. What you're seeing on the screen now is the demonstration scene, which was the first piece of artwork made with version 1 of the add-on. Before we dive into how it works, I should tell you that yes, you can download both the add-on and the demonstration scene completely for free from the link in the description. Just enter zero in the payment field to get it for free, or a higher number if you want to leave me a tip. All of the support goes a long way towards making sure that more fun content will be coming in the future. So let's take a look at how to set it up. When you download the add-on, you'll be given a zip file. If you've installed any add-on with Blender in the past, then you'll know how this works. Once you've downloaded the file, you need to go to your Blender, then Edit and Preferences. Then in the Add-ons tab, you need to click on the Install button. This will open up a file browser where you can navigate to where you downloaded the zip file and then select it. Once you've done that, Biogen should appear in the add-on list. You can also use the search bar to find it by name. An important note here is that there is a high probability that someone watching this is going to have an issue where they've either received an error while trying to install the add-on or it's just not showing up in the list. This will be for any number of reasons. The Blender API or internal add-on requirements may have changed with a new version depending on what point in the future you are watching this video. A lot of common issues with installing add-ons already have solutions online, so a quick Google search might help you out. As I'm making this video, I've tested installing the add-on on a few different systems using the Blender build shown on the screen now. If you've managed to install it correctly, then when you're in the 3D viewport you will see a tab called Biogen on the right toolbar. This is otherwise known as the N menu, which you can open and close by pressing N on your keyboard. In this tab you'll find three panels labeled Generation, Modify and Tools. They can be individually collapsed and rearranged as you like. The Generation panel is what you can use to create new objects in the scene. The Modify panel is what you can use to apply generative styles to pre-existing objects, essentially automating the technique shown in the first video. The Tools panel is just for a couple of useful operations related to the processes above. As I work on future versions of the add-on, the number of available modes and parameters will be fleshed out, but I've made sure to do it in a way that only variables relevant to the selected mode will be shown on the screen at any given time. Whenever you create or modify an object with the add-on, changes will be made in a non-destructive way. This means that all of the original mesh data will be preserved. This is because the add-on uses the modify stack to build up mesh manipulation effects, each of which can be enabled and disabled as required. So let's take a look at some examples. I've created three cubes and given them subdivision surface modifiers at a level of three. We're going to take a look at the different styles that can be applied to pre-existing objects. First of all, we have hard surface faceting, which is the same as the technique shown in the first video. If I apply it, we can see that in the Modifiers tab of the Properties window, that all of the appropriate modifiers have been created. We can make individual changes to each of them and adjust the result. Since the result is primarily controlled by the decimation values in the modifier, these have been exposed in the add-on panel so that they can be set prior to the operation. Typically a low and a high value will create a lower poly result, whereas a high and a low value will create a higher poly result. Occasionally, when playing with values like this, you might find results where strange and floating faces have been created. It's a good idea to adjust the strength value of the displace modifier and the decimation angle limit to smoothly correct the result. Holding shift while clicking and dragging on values will let you change them at smaller increments for finer control. Let's talk a bit more about displacement. For these faceting styles, the original mesh is first of all modified by a displacement texture before the surface mesh effects are generated. The type of texture to use for the displacement can be selected from the drop-down before the operation is performed. If we take a look at the displace modifier in the result, then you can see that the add-on will automatically generate a new texture with a randomized ID. This makes it easier to separate individual texture settings for each object. However, if you are working on a complex scene and end up generating tons of faceting effects with the add-on, then you can end up with a long list of generated textures. If you don't need them anymore, then you can use the Purge Textures operation in the Tools panel, which will remove all of the textures created by the add-on. Of course, if there were any objects still making use of the texture, then they will lose that link. But you can always undo the operation if you click on it accidentally. Okay, so let's take a look at the Metal Shell mode. If I go to another one of our objects and apply this style, then you can see how we get this metal grating effect that conforms to the original wireframe. 
By default, the operation will add a triangulate modifier before turning this wireframe into a new mesh. But if you want to keep the original geometric structure, then you can just disable the tick box in the panel. If you want to adjust the thickness of the effect, then you can go into the wireframe modifier in the stack and adjust the thickness value. Moving on, we have the organic shell mode, which works the same way as the metal shell, except now we have control over displacement to create some inconsistencies in the topology. I'm going to set the displacement type to wood and give it a slightly higher value of 0.3. Notice how the shaping is less predictable than the metal shell due to the organic nature. You can control the presence of these larger openings in the shape from the angle limit in the decimate modifier. The higher I make it, the larger the holes will be, however it does rely on there being a sufficient amount of curvature in the object, which a displacement modifier will help to generate. If you find that you have strange faces and vertices trying to escape from the mesh, then go to the smooth modifier and turn down the repeat value. This will relax the vertices and allow the displacement to have more influence over the mesh. The next mode is probably the most fun to use, it's called hard surface skin. And what I've done is set up a very simple object that we're going to use it with. In edit mode, we can see that the object has only two vertices and a single edge. If we go back to object mode and disable the mirror checkbox and then apply the style, we can see that it's immediately started to build a faceted pattern around the single edge. This behavior is mainly powered by the skin modifier. If we go back into edit mode, we can branch off new vertices and even change the scale of each vertex by pressing Ctrl plus A to scale it up and down. Going back into object mode, we can see how the style auto-generates around the new mesh information. You can easily increase or decrease the number of faceted edges by changing the decimation ratio and angle limits in the modifier stack. As well as this, if you want to increase the overall resolution of the mesh, then you can increase the octree depth value in the remesh modifier. You can use this mode to quickly concept and build up interesting objects, anything from simple faceted shapes to large and complex geometric structures. Full credit for this technique goes to Emiliano Colantoni, who was also the main source of inspiration for the first video. They have recently created a template blend file called Mechify, which lets people make use of this skinning technique by using a version of Blender with a voxel remesher. I decided to incorporate this method into Bygen with the original remesh modifier, which is slightly more limited but still completely functional. If you haven't seen any of Emiliano's recent work, then I highly recommend checking it out, because it's quite amazing stuff. Now if setting up a basic starting object for the skin mode with two vertices and a single edge sounds like too much effort, then don't worry, because I've made an operation that does it for you. In the generation panel, if you choose the hard surface skin mode and then click generate mesh, a template starting object for this style will be created for you. You can also choose whether or not to mirror the results to the other side before generating by using the mirror checkbox. Then with very little effort you can start molding away and coming up with cool looking shapes. Now, all of these styles and generation methods are intended to act as non-destructive templates, meaning if you don't like how the results look, then you have complete control over going into the modifiers and changing the values to suit your needs. You can even create, reorder and delete modifiers as you see fit. The primary purpose of this add-on is to save you time with creating these styles and concepting new ideas with them. I'm really excited to see what kinds of cool things you will make with this, and please keep in mind that this is just the beginning. As time goes on, I will be incorporating much more strange and extensive procedures into Bygen. Before we wrap this up, let's take another look at the demonstration artwork. If you open up the file, you'll be able to see that the modifier stacks have been left intact. The core body parts are using the original faceting style from the first video, whereas the secondary layer of geometry was made with the hard surface skin mode we've just been talking about. The abstract structure surrounding the left shoulder was created with a triangulated version of the organic shell type, and you have complete freedom to change the values to see how it all works. So I think that'll wrap it up for this video. Don't forget that you can download both the add-on and the demonstration artwork for free from the link in the description. Play around with it and make sure to tag me in any of your work if you make something cool. I want to give an extra special thank you to all of the wonderful people that keep leaving donations on the free resources. You know who you are and you're really helping to make sure that more free content will be coming in the future. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell. You can follow me on social media to stay up to date. As well as that, you can also join our Discord server to share your work, take part in discussions and get sneak previews and upcoming content. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.